Epic. E P I C. Epic. That is the word of the day here. It's the season one finale of the Sacred Playgrounds podcast. So we're going to talk about four things. E P I C. A little alliteration for your day today. Four things that will help us have an incredible summer this summer. And then we'll end with some encouragement, some prayer for you, for those of you who are engaged with camp and are about to make this an awesome summer for some really incredible campers. Welcome to the Sacred Playgrounds Podcast, where we dive deep into theology, research, and practical wisdom for camps, retreat centers, and other key ministry spaces. I'm your host, Jared Rendell, camp enthusiast and part of the Sacred Playgrounds team. This podcast features Dr. Jake Sorensen, a scholar and practitioner who's helping leaders think more deeply about outdoor ministry and the impact it's making. Wonder with us what God might have in store at your Sacred Playground. Hey everybody, welcome to the playground. Our our season finale, Jake. Season one comes to a close today. Yeah, it seems sort of weird, doesn't it? To, to be ending the season just as the summer season is beginning. Uh, I, I don't know, it, feel, it, it feels weird. I mean, I, I guess it, it makes sense because our camp people are going to be so busy during the summer that they're not gonna wanna take time to listen to a podcast, but it, it still feels a little strange. You don't think this is the first thing everyone would be doing on their breaks? <laughs> the, the, the smidges of breaks they get? Just That's true. I've got, I've got an hour off. I am going to go listen to the podcast in the shower. <laughs> this is my one time to shower. My one time to, to pray by myself, be in silence. And I, I, what I want to do is listen to Jake and Jared talk. That's right. <laughs> Multitasking at its best. Oh, this, would be, this would be a good break. And, and, it, and it does, right? Because we spend this this year, this season, in lots of ways, building into and equipping and putting things like the Holy Ground book and these podcast episodes and other resources in the hands of these staff and these leaders. And, and then off they go. And hopefully some of what we've been, you know, been talking about and building into is put into practice now, right? is built into what's, what's happening in the summer ahead. So between them being busy, Sacred Playgrounds is pretty busy too, because there's stuff going on, right? I mean, you're, you're off the staff training, what, next week? Yeah, next week we we've got a couple of staff trainings that we're heading out to, um, and Anna and I both are heading out to staff training, so that'll be fun. Um, I always like to you know keep my foot in there because it's it's so fun to be interacting with the staff members as they're preparing for the summer. Um, so I don't like pack the schedule full, but I try to I try to still get out there um, and and interact with the young adults that are that are ministering at camp this summer. I just I just love working with them and and hearing what's going on in their lives and. And seeing what it's what it's about preparing for the ministry this summer, so I'm excited to do that. That's always fun. One of uh, one of my former colleagues, who now uh, is a camp director, posted their staff training schedule on social media today, and I sent a message right away. I was like, "Those were those were some of the best. I yeah. love staff training times. Um, you know, being part of them, leading them, completely exhausting, you know, nonstop. But those are still." Those are some of my favorite times at camp. And that's what, that's what lots, of, lots of you or the staff that you hired are in the midst of either right now or, or really soon as you're listening to this. So absolutely, here's yeah. hoping and praying those things are, are going well. It's one, of, it's one of the great times of the summer. It sets the tone. It sets mm-hmm. the tone for the staff. It sets the tone for the summer, uh, for the community that you're going to have. And so it's such an important time. Absolutely. So let's, let's, let's take a thank you moment here uh, for, for those that, Put this guide for summer camp staff, holy ground that this sacred playgrounds team and and some friends uh, ran really hard to to put out and uh, lots and lots of you ordered and right now are holding, you know, holding this and you've you've put this in your staff hands. So, so thank you for ordering and letting us join you in, in equipping and encouraging your staff. And we will continue to pray that it and any of these other, you know, these other things that you've put into place will be, will be a blessing. Yeah, Anna and I boxed them up last week, and it was just, it was fun, like seeing all the names of these people that we know, some that we don't know, but sending them around the country and, and several overseas as well, um, and just imagining the staff holding them in their hands, you know, and saying a prayer over them and, and, and really 
wishing them the best for this summer. Um, we we had fun uh, just boxing them up and sending them mm-hmm. out, you know, and kind of thinking about the, the, those people that will, will be holding them in their hands. And we had a we had we had a fun time too because um, not all the boxes that we we ordered for shipping came, and so we had to like scramble Oops. around the house looking for boxes <laughs> to, to ship them out in. <laughs> so some of them have a little extra little extra fun uh, um you know uh, that, that we we, we said like uh, you know a, a box that bulletins came in to you know one of our lutheran pastor friends because oh he'll appreciate that you know <laughs> oh funny <laughs> whatever whatever you gotta do my kids always like to like to color on boxes so they would have been getting like boxes with doodles and <laughs> oh that would have been fun we should have totally done that just Although, scribbled all over our kids are you know teenagers now so they're they're not as into just scribbling on things but um yeah, we got that out the door and that's been fun. That's been such a fun project to do. Um, and now we've got this summer is is going to be really wild for us. We've got a huge group of camps participating in effective camp. Um, mm-hmm. And the largest group is our United Methodist camp friends. And so we've got a, a group of United Methodist camp and retreat ministries throughout the country that are participating in the project. We did a random sample of United Methodist camps. And so we've got um, camps from every region of the country. It's something like a dozen or more states that um, that these camps are part of that are participating, and um, it's going to be really great. We're going to get over four thousand campers participating in that project, wow. and then we're doing another. Uh, it's an analogous project called the Power of Camp with mm-hmm. uh, the Christian Camp and Conference Association (3CA), CA. and so we've got a, a, a bunch of camps that are participating in that, and then we've got a few extras that are participating in their own effective camp. So we've got we've got over thirty camps that are participating in like the full effective camp camper study this summer which is really <laughs> exciting that we've got some others that are doing the parent surveys so um, it's going to be a busy summer of data entry and analysis and working with these different camps and 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 helping them succeed i mean that's what the, that's what that project's about is to find out where they shine and to to really help them tell that story well in a different way you know mm-hmm. um it's a we use data to tell the story in a new way and then also to uh, identify some areas for program development, for improvement. Uh, how can we make our ministries even better so we can serve these these young people better at our camps? So I'm uh, really excited about all that, uh, all that work that we're going to be doing this summer and and doing a, a little bit of follow up as well with the Camp and Church Leadership Project. So that staff study that we did mm-hmm. uh, last summer, doing some follow up with that, too. So um, we are very busy um, and really excited about uh, this summer of ministry. That's exciting. So you know, you know that the team still has a uh, still has enough data geek in them that we're like, ooh, so much data. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's exciting about the United Methodist one? I mean, with Effective Camp, you know, like it's it's been so much. You know, this camp way over here, this camp way over here, and they they ended up being clustered, you know, in Wisconsin or the Midwest. And now with the United Methodist study, doing a random sample of the whole country is really going to get a broad sense mm-hmm. of camping in the United Methodist tradition. And that's, that's really exciting to be able to do something like that. Because that's powerful. We've, we've learned enough, uh, you know, to know um, in, in the long tail of, of research, like we know research takes a long time and you, you know, and you keep doing it over time and you get to compare and you get to grow. But at the end of the day, like we've said on this podcast more than once, the data doesn't matter if you don't apply it and make choices. And and use it to do good things, and like you said, impact and make a difference in, uh, in in how you do your ministry. So, yeah, um, yeah so that's a that is exciting. Yeah, we don't do research for research's sake. You know, we do, we do research to help empower our camping ministries and to help strengthen our camping ministries and to help get more people to camp. Um, you know, otherwise we would be you know working at camps ourselves because that's where the front lines of the ministries are. And so, right. yeah. um, we're here to support our, our camping and retreat ministries in whatever way we can, um, because we believe in the power of those ministries. So, um, this last episode, this time that we have, I, I just, I want us to provide some encouragement, uh, for those that are entering staff training right now and entering a a, a busy summer of ministry. Um, I, I just, I want to pray with them. I want to wish them well. Um, and encourage them that that what you are doing really, really matters, um, and mm-hmm. to keep the most important things at the top of the list, because uh, that's sometimes hard to do when we're enmeshed in all the details. You mm-hmm. know, um, when we're our program directors, our directors, our assistant program directors, all our site directors, all these folks, 
have all these things that are that are that are going through their heads right now. They might have a an ACA visit that they've got to do. They've got to plan staff training. They got to they got to coordinate all these different people coming in. There's all these different things that have to fit in place. Plus, they're still doing camper registrations. Some people are still hiring staff. You know, even as staff training starts, right. they still need staff members to cover mm-hmm. certain weeks of the summer. There's all these moving parts. And so to keep some of the main things, the main things uh, is really important to remember this time of year. So in light of that, we have made an epic, epic episode for this finale. Because here's our, here's our plan. So this is the last episode of season one. We're going to take this summer break and we're going to go do all this good work that we have to do, all of us together, you as you're listening. Um, and, then, and then the plan is to come back early this fall with, uh, with a season two of the sacred playgrounds podcast. So, so we, so we made an epic finale literally, cause we're going to use, we're going to use that word to frame us up a little bit, right? Yes, we are because we, um, we love alliteration and we love abbreviations. Um, and so, um, this is going to be an epic episode as we try to keep the main things, the main things. Yeah, that's the idea. So these letters, we're literally going to use these letters. Uh, in in alliteration to to say some of the key things and we've kind of we've talked about uh, about these ideas throughout this season of, of the podcast and in in other spaces on the website and in the articles and things like that um so to distill them down into into this into this word it'll help it help it stick in our brains hopefully and so uh so let's kick off we're going to start with the e yes yes we're going to start with the e because epic starts with an e and in order okay. to have an epic summer you need to remember the acronym EPIC. So experience over explanation. At camp, we are going to emphasize experience. And we're going to do that during staff training. And so it's so tempting to just sit back and start talking to people, start explaining it with words. And at camp, we learn through doing. And so if you, when you're doing staff training, try to teach your staff members through explaining things to them rather than through an experiential learning, they're going to try to do that for the campers. And so we need to teach (laughs) using our philosophy, using the pedagogy of camp, using the logic of camp. And so that's why I want to emphasize experience over explanation. Good start. Then that leads throughout the summer, right? So as, as your staff are doing Bible studies, or and especially those really key learning times, um, right? We know enough about brain science, especially adolescent brain science and, and kid brain science, that um, there is so much more retention when things are experienced, right? When they're taught in multiple ways, when they can when they can hear, right? We know people have these different learning styles, but at the end of the day, when they get it in multiple learning styles, that's the best chance for retention. And we want them to walk away, all of us across the board, whatever the uniqueness of our camp is, we're hoping that they walk away knowing Jesus. And so that retention just get in in all these different styles. They hear it, they see it, especially they can touch it and experience it um, all the way through. So like you said, that starts at staff training in how we model that and they'll do it the rest of the summer. Here's the thing. We, we, the more we learn and the more we know, the more we want to start explaining things to people, right? Um, and mm-hmm. that is simply not the best teacher. Even if you know a ton of things, experience is the best teacher. Experience is a better teacher than you are. And so help the young people experience these things and help them learn through experience. And so rather than jumping into an explanation, how can we experience it? Experience over explanation. That is the E in Epic. Good start. All right, there's the E. What's next? The P is participation over prescription. Now, we oftentimes want to prescribe the way to do things. And some of us are very organized people. We like to lay out things in order. We want to make sure things are on time. We're great with schedules. We need those people at camp. We need people that are good with schedules. We need people that, that, that know where people are supposed to be at what time. We don't want to emphasize that over participation. We don't want to prescribe so much that there's not room for creativity. 
-hmm. And so we say participation over prescription. Rather than just telling people what they're going to do, let them participate in the planning and in the leading. This goes for all of the activities at camp. This goes for something like worship. They shouldn't just sit there and be passive recipients Mm -hmm. and be told what they're supposed to do at that time. Can they participate in the planning and the leading of worship? Can they participate in the planning and the leading of the games? Can they participate in the planning and the leading of the skits? So it's, it's not as much prescribed as it is an invitation to participate. And so experience over explanation, participation over prescription. What I appreciate about that, about that part is that it, it doesn't mean, to your point, doesn't mean don't plan. It doesn't mean don't be intentional. Intentionally create space for that creativity, for that participation together, for that, that you know, time in, whether you, like you said, explaining a game or, or creating a skit or worship or whatever it is. Plan it, absolutely, but plan intentionally that time for it to be collaborative and participatory. One of the great things about camp, too, is you can't always, you can't plan for every contingency. You're always going to get thrown for a loop, right? There's going to be, wet, bad weather's going to blow in. You know, you're going to be out on the, the, on the trail or out on a canoe trip, and you can't leave the campsite, or you get stranded somewhere, or you have to do a different activity because this didn't work out, this thing didn't arrive. Um, on the delivery truck, whatever it was, you know, you're going to have to punt. You're going to have to be creative and do something new. And so camp forces us to do that sometimes. We should also plan for those things um, mm-hmm. and, and, and make sure that there's room for participation. I mean, that's one of the five fundamental characteristics, right? Camp is participatory. Yeah. So participation over prescription. Mm-hmm. We've got two letters uh, left to go in our epic season finale. We've done the E, we've done the P. Jake, give us those one more time, and then, we'll, and then we'll go to our next letter. So we're emphasizing experience over explanation. We're emphasizing participation over prescription. And the I is input. We're emphasizing input over ideology. Input over ideology. Okay. We are in a very polarized society right now. Um, we are forced to take sides. You have to choose this or that. You know, right now, the, 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 the big debate that's, that's raging again in our society is a debate over abortion. And there's this fallacy of thinking that you either have to be all the way over to this position or all the way over to this position. You can't, it's either pro-life or you're pro-choice. And that, that means whatever the other side thinks that it means on, on the extreme. Um, so you're put in these in these boxes, in these corners, um, and sometimes pressured or even forced to conform to a certain ideology. Um, I want us to emphasize input. And this is part of the participatory nature of camp. It's also part of the community and the relational nature of camp. It's mm-hmm. also part of creating a safe space. Safe space to have my own ideas, to play with my own ideas. And to know that these young people that are coming to camp, whether they are campers or they are staff members, they don't have it all figured out. They're, they're actively working to figure it out. And some of these staff members who are young adults, 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever they are, um, they, might have, they might start subscribing to a certain ideology but they, they probably don't have it solidified or all figured out. Mm-hmm. And so we really want to work to complicate these things so that we, we don't just end up in these silos. Uh, we are called um, as Christians to love our neighbor and to love our enemies, right? Um, we don't want to see somebody with a different understanding on a certain issue as our enemies. And that's, that's what ideology so, sometimes forces us to mm-hmm. do. And so emphasizing input, discussion, not, not even debate, really, but what do you think? Okay, and rather than saying that's wrong, and here's why, being open to an understanding of that, and sharing your own input, and then together coming to a deeper understanding. That's what we do in the camp environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and so recognizing that each individual has something special to bring to the table. Um, 
and that that goes for talents you know we always talk about that in terms of you know the body of christ right. we have different talents we have different spiritual gifts things like that but also ideas input you know welcoming input um is sometimes a really hard thing um because we have sometimes in our mind what we want people to think the, the, there's the right answer and if there's the right answer then you're not asking for input you're only asking for people to conform hmm. and that's what not what we want we don't want conformity we want people to be able to form their own ideas and and actually challenge some of their preconceived notions and that's what diversity can do true diversity sometimes we we get so caught in the ideology that a certain perspective becomes the thing that needs to be you know held up as the most important sure and then somebody that disagrees with that is told that they're wrong yeah um and that can that can shut people down you know even if it's a even if it's a viewpoint that we think is harmful telling them that they're wrong and that their input doesn't matter that only leads to entrenchment dialogue input um making sure that people feel heard and that they're safe um and and this is sometimes challenging at, at our camps because sometimes our our camps can subscribe to a certain ideology as well and we need to be mm -hmm. careful about that um, we need to make sure that everybody feels welcome uh those who are 100 percent in agreement with us as directors program directors summer staff whatever and those that disagree with us um, so that's where we we emphasize input over ideology and this starts with staff training friends because you know we we sometimes get into staff training and we we get an understanding that we're all on the same page you know we make assumptions about the people that come in and like they must be like me <laughs> mm -hmm. one of the first activities that i would do during staff training um when i was a program director is i would i would have two sides of the room and I would say, if you believe this, go to this side of the room. If you believe this, go to this side of the room. Or if this has been your experience, you know, um, so to speak, you know, sure. like if, if you have siblings, go to this side. If you don't have siblings, go to this side, that, that sort of thing. If you've been if you've been to another country, go over here. If you haven't over here, you know, and then we started going into, you know, more deeper, you know, ideal ideological questions. Mm -hmm. And people would be surprised to find themselves at opposite sides of the room from somebody that they care about. Sure. And just that understanding that we can still love and care about each other and work well together, even when we disagree on certain topics. The outcome of that, right, the outcome of an input focused mindset is something that we all want and that we that we build camp for, because the outcome of that mindset is growth. Right? And if we would if we would put a, a few words to what we hope, we want campers to grow at, at, at camp. and. And a, and a full, you know, a full prescriptive, to use that other word, and prescriptive and ideology, like we don't come out with, with growth. Change maybe, but, but not growth. Growth is different, right? Growth, you know, sort of onward and onward and upward. And we've got that input mindset. Well, the outcome of that is growth. And that's what we want. We all want that for, our, for ourselves. That's what happens when we wrestle with things. That's what happens when we experience things. If you think of it in terms of mindsets, yeah, we're, we're talking about open versus closed, you know, an open, an open understanding of growth and of who I am. And, and I can, I can absorb new ideas and I can do new things. I can learn new things. Um, that's, that's a key aspect of camp and a key outcome of camp. Absolutely. Yeah. So we've got experience over explanation. We've got participation over prescription. We've got input over ideology. And then. The C, the last letter of epic, of our epic summer, is community. Community over content. Community, community, community. We're emphasizing um, the importance of being together, the importance of building community over the content. And I, and I, I think of this especially um, in, in terms of uh, the, the staff training sessions, um, in terms of uh, the Bible studies that we have during the summer. Um, so often we, that we have to get through things. We have mm. to get to the end of this. We have to make sure that we get through the content. Um, but really the community is the driver of the camp experience. 
first and foremost, in staff training, what we're trying to do is form a community. In our cabin groups each week of the summer, first and foremost, we are trying to build a community. There's, a cert there's certain content that we hope that people will, will grasp and understand. And I understand that during staff training, there's certain content that we need to get through, sure. quote unquote, right? We need to get through all the policies and procedures. We need to make sure that they understand this certain content. Remember that when you're doing that, to emphasize experience over explanation, right? Right. <laughs> That's the E, right? But community is the first priority. And so in all that you're doing, trying to build this community, trying to build this trust so that you can open the space for the camp experience to happen. Um, when we emphasize the content um, and we think that getting through the content is the most important thing, sometimes we sacrifice the community building. Um, sometimes we sacrifice the input um, that, that individuals can have. Sometimes we sacrifice the participation. Um, and this, again, the, the most common uh, way that this happens is in Bible study, where we, we think we have to get mm -hmm. through the curriculum. And that's right. not the point. <laughs> the Wait, point what? of the Bible study curriculum is not to get <laughs> through the curriculum. You know, it's to it's to have an experience together around the mm -hmm. word, word of God. You know, we open the scripture together. We read the scripture together. We have a discussion about it. And sometimes that discussion meanders far from what the curriculum is. And that's OK. You know, the point is not mm -hmm. to get through the content because they're not going to remember the content. They're going to remember the community. They're going to remember what it feels like to be in that space and to have the Bibles open on the lap together. And to encounter the word of God, to encounter the living Christ um, in the community, in the circle, um, and in the camp experience. Yeah, we talked a little brain science earlier, right? But that they're literally, especially at, at the ages of so many of our campers, when you look at, when you look at a Bible study curriculum or, or whatever it is, there is simply way more content than they can actually take in. That's not what, you know, that's not what's going to happen. So when we create these things to be community builders. And, and like you said, kind of these other, all the other, all the other letters come down to, to ways that that's created when we are experiential and participatory and, and emphasize input. Um, so what that does is create is create community because we experience these things together. And, and like you said, that's what they're going to, that's what they're going to remember. That's what, that's what they're going to take to heart. All of our camp stories, they think about all right. Camps ton about stories. We've talked about it before. All of our camp stories, how many of them have to do with, you know, what we learned in the second Bible study on Tuesday of week three, right? right? What, we, what, we, what we talk about is the people. We talk about my lifelong best friend, Mark, and we talk about when we did this, right? When we, whatever it is, staff after hours water sliding or, uh, or that cabin group that did the best, most ridiculous thing. And we left there as a, as a community. Those are all our camp stories. And if you, if you want to know what people remember, just go back to the stories that they're, that they're inclined to tell. Yep. Absolutely. And notice a lot of those things are unplanned, right? Right. As we talk about participation over prescription, mm -hmm. a lot of the things that are, that provide the most indelible memories are the ones that were unscripted. They happen. Yeah. They're yep. indipitously, you know, they open, we opened the space for those things to happen. The spirit was moving and we saw a glimpse of the spirit at work. Um, we experienced God um, in this particular way. Um, and so um, let's have an epic summer. That was epic. <laughs> <laughs> we got to love the acronyms. We got to love the alliteration, right? And let's so, just lean in. <laughs> um, so, so have an epic summer, everybody. Um, and, and remember, emphasize these things from the start. Don't just tell, don't try to explain these things to your staff members. They have to experience it. They have to participate in it. They have to make it their own. Um, and they will create these things as a community and create these understandings as a community and then carry it forward for you. And so it, you set the tone right away um, in staff training and right away on the first day of every new session of every new week of campers. Uh, so make it epic, emphasize experience over explanation, participation over prescription, input over ideology, and community over content. 
Amen. So we want to close with just um, with just a few words of encouragement and prayer. So be encouraged. Where, whether you are a you know you're a kind of director person or a program director or you know, happen to be a staff member, maybe you're even a parent or, or, or a church leader who is who cares about camp. Uh, wherever you are, um, be encouraged that you are engaging with par- participating in uh, on whatever level it is something that really really continues to matter. We've we've mentioned a couple times over this season that um, that camp in 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 this summer and these summers ahead might be more important than ever. And uh, that has both some experiential reasoning, and that's what the data is telling us in, in some ways, too. And so, um, so be encouraged that what you're doing is really consequential. It really, really matters. And that you said yes to whatever way that you're participating in it. If you're leading the way, if you're down doing those Bible studies, if you are the one in there training those staff, uh, equipping and, and praying for them, whatever way you are leaning into this, it really matters. It's a really important time in the lives of these campers, whether they are a, a young day camper, whether they are a, are, are a parent of, of these campers when they come home, this stuff still really matters. And uh, it's not just another summer. It's not just another summer for them. And if it's your, if it's your first or if it's your 30th, um, these, these things will really make a difference for them this summer. The space that you're creating, the epic things that you are doing are going to make a big difference. Friends, thank you for your ministry. Um, We'll leave you this season uh, with this blessing. May God grant you safety, joy, and success in your ministries this summer. May the unexpected reveal new insight. May you see Christ in the face of the stranger and the one with whom you disagree. May you leave space for the Holy Spirit to dance with and among you. And may you recognize God at work around you and through you. Go with God, my friends. Amen. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next season on the Sacred Playgrounds podcast. Thanks for listening to the Sacred Playgrounds podcast. This episode was produced by me, Jared Rendell, and featured Dr. Jake Sorensen, lead researcher and founder at Sacred Playgrounds, LLC. Our theme music was written and performed by Taylor Wilson. You can find his original songs wherever you get your music. Learn more and connect with the Sacred Playgrounds team at sacredplaygrounds.com.